Hi, my name is Chris Holton Jablonski, and it is my great joy and privilege to serve you as your minister. This is The Opening of Eyes by David White. That day I saw beneath dark clouds the passing of light over the water, and I heard the voice of the world speak out. I knew then, as I had before, Life is no passing memory of what has been, nor the remaining pages in a great book waiting to be read. It is the opening of eyes long closed. It is the vision of far off things seen for the silence they hold. It is the heart after years of secret conversing, speaking out in loud, clear air. It is Moses in the desert, fallen to his knees before the lit bush. It is the man throwing away his shoes as if to enter heaven and finding himself astonished, opened at last, fallen in love with solid ground. As some of you might remember, there was a world in which we had an auction. A world in which we had our wonderful TV land theme where we dressed up. Miami Vice over here, Mrs. Maisel's, some Adams Family, so many wonderful costumes. I fell more deeply in love with you all that night with your playfulness and joy. And that night, as we will be able to do for many years to come, someone bought a sermon topic. This is a fun opportunity, of course, first and foremost to support the church, but also to have a hand in shaping some of the message that you all hear, usually in our Sunday morning worship, now in all these new and fascinating ways we share our messages with you all. John Eggert, bought the sermon topic, and we met a little while later. Now again, this was just February that we had the auction, February 8th, just a few weeks before this all started. It seems to me a year ago. But we met, and his question, the idea he wanted me to sink in and preach on, was what do we tell our grandchildren? Now back when we met, this question was about the world we had created, about the climate, about the condition of our planet. The question was about this current administration, about the state of our country and its place in the world. And now, living in this strange new normal, the question resonates still and even more. What do we tell our grandchildren? So I wanna answer John's question in a bunch of ways. In normal days, when you bid on this item in the auction, chances are you will only get one sermon and one service. But John struck uh, surprising gold when he won this item right before programming drastically shifted. And so this message, this midweek message, and then this From Your Minister Junior Edition, and next week's Sunday worship will all touch on this question. What do we tell our grandchildren? Now for me, my grandchildren, may they be cuddly, attentive, adorable, and many, are a little ways off. But the question to me is about our place in the flow of time, our legacy, and our accountability. The question for me is about being active and engaged in this world, is about striving to live with our eyes open, with our hands working, and our vision clear. So many ways, my answer begins with David White, White's reminder that life is no passing memory of what has been, nor the remaining pages in a great book waiting to be read. It is the opening of eyes long closed. It is the vision of far off things. So this is the first part to me, the opening of eyes long closed. Our path, our Unitarian Universalist path is one of learning and growth. We strive to open our eyes over and over to resist the overwhelm that would have us shut down and retreat to see this world, to see this moment for what it is, 
And then once we see, we cannot unsee. And with all that we have learned, with all that we are learning, we are compelled to act, to mobilize, to resist. We are compelled to be active forces for transformation and good in this world. We serve. Right here and now, in the face of this difficult moment, there is so much we can do. From the comfort of wherever you are watching this, you can help support incredible organizations working to help serve folks ravaged by this moment. As we've mentioned in some other places, our friends over at UU Mass Action are in the last few days of a matching grant, raising money to help the people of Chelsea, to help incarcerated folks, people struggling with food scarcity in this moment. We'll post a link with more information down in the section below this video. So you can donate to these amazing organizations and through them you can make huge differences in people's lives. And then this Sunday, we will be hearing from some of our own UU The Vote team about ways that we can help mobilize and re-enfranchise voters who have been stripped of their voting rights by racist and predatory powers. And soon we will have the opportunity to decorate cars and ride together in a vehicular pride parade here in town, celebrating the wholeness and beauty, the worth, the dignity, the power, the awesomeness, and the wonder of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer folks. And this is all to answer that question, what do we tell our grandchildren? We tell them through our actions, through our living, that we strive to be awake, that we strive to serve, that we strive to build a more just and loving world filled with more beauty and more joy. And I wanna underline the fact that when we talk about what we tell our grandchildren, we are not just talking about words. When we do our comprehensive sexuality education program our whole lives, one of my favorite tidbits comes during a parent session when we talk with the parents about the fact that they are the primary educators of their children. This is especially a funny fact to me during a time of remote learning where we are very much the primary educators of our children. But even in a time when our schools are running full steam, still our children are learning from us all the time. They are watching us all the time. Our grandchildren too. And so John's question is about more than words, so much more than words. What we tell our grandchildren, our community, our neighbors, our lawmakers, we tell through our actions, through our choices, through our living, especially now, as we face this moment together, as we open our eyes and see many more months of this, as we open our eyes and see a summer of many more months of this, our reactions, our choices speak volumes, tell volumes. I love this retelling of the 121st Psalm adapted by Robert Zordi. I will lift my eyes unto the hills from whence comes my strength. My help comes from the heavens and the earth from good neighbors and the spirit of the hills and valleys. My help comes from outside and inside. It waits when I am impatient. It prods me when I hesitate from fear. When I am strong with courage and with faith, the sun and rain shall not afflict me by day and sorrow will not haunt me by night. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will lift my eyes unto the hills. They will keep my coming in and going out. What we tell our grandchildren now, through our actions as well as our words, is that together we can chase this challenging time. We tell them through our actions as well as our words that we are committed to building a more just and loving world, one in which all voices are cherished and welcomed into our democracy, one in which all people, no matter who they love or who they most deeply are, are cherished and loved, welcomed in and put to work, 
We tell them through our actions as well as our words that life is hard, that this moment is hard. And so we take care of ourselves and one another. We are gentle as we find our strength. And we tell them that they are precious, that they are needed, that they are a gift to this world. Life has always been hard. The struggle for love and justice, for dignity and wholeness has never been welcomed with a parade the first time. It has been fought for and won by people just like us, rising up hand in hand, refusing to give up. It has been fought for and won by people just like our grandchildren, who watched as their grandparents rose up and worked tirelessly for the world they wanted to leave for those they loved. It has been fought for and won by people just like our grandchildren, who had people just like us to show them the way. And so, dear people, know that you are held and loved. Know that the struggle continues and you are not alone. Know that in this difficult time, there is still so much we can do. Open your eyes. See this beautiful, broken world. See your help coming down from the hills, filling you, feeding you, bringing you life and sustenance. See the eyes of your grandchildren, the eyes of all the children watching, learning from our example. See this all and get to work. So much love to you all. Amen.